Alright, so today we're doing 16.2, arc length and radian measure. Okay, so we already kind of know what an arc is, we've already gone over it. Um, I actually like this better, the original definition I gave you guys, it said a continuous um, part, which is a bit misleading because I think some of you guys might think it's the whole circle. Um, but it just means that there's no breaks in that segment, okay? So I like this definition better. It says an unbroken part of a circle consisting of two points called the endpoints and all the points on the circle between them. So again, we have our circle there and my arc, maybe something like this. And I'll call this A and B, which are my points. And this is arc A, B, remember it's represented by that little arc on top of them. Um, okay, we're now going to be talking about arc length, okay, not just the the measurement of the angle within the arc, um, but actually the length of the arc itself. So it's basically that line right there, okay. So it is the distance along a circular arc measured in linear units. Um, in case you're wondering, linear units are just like inches, centimeters, feet, you know, things that we're, we're used to, right? It's a length. It's not anything. It's not an, an angle. It's not degrees. It's length. Okay, we should all know that length is always in something like that. Feet, inches, centimeters, miles, etc. Now, to find the arc length, what we need to do is the arc length, which is symbolized by S. I know I don't understand why it's S. It just is. Okay, I know you guys are probably thinking, but Ms. Perdomo, there's no S in arc length unless I'm sol solving for multiple arcs or multiple lengths. But it's, it's always just S. Okay, that's the assigned variable. Um, so the arc length S of an arc with measure M degrees and a radius of r is given by the formula s equals m over 360 times 2 pi r. So I wrote it in the definition, but I also wrote it over on the, the last column just so it's a bit bigger for you guys to see. Um, and I'll also draw, draw a little diagram for you. So there's my circle. I'm going to draw in my arc, which is going to look something like this, right? This point here to the point, we'll call it B. This is my radius right there. Here's my point A, right? And this is gonna be my M. So let me actually kind of highlight it in a different color. This here is what's considered my M, okay? That's the degrees of the arc, um, and that's what we need to solve for the problems, okay? So we're going to, of course, do an example, okay? Um, I'm trying to give you guys some more exposure to word problems. Circles usually involve a lot of word problems. I'm not sure why, but they usually like to give word problems with circles. You very rarely get a question that says, here's a diameter or here's a radius, solve for this, okay? It's usually some kind of work problem with a couple of extra steps, all right? So the first step, so we're now going to apply the formula. So the question says, on a clock face, the minute hand of a clock is 10 inches long. To the nearest tenth of an inch, how far does the tip of the minute hand travel as the time progresses from 12 to 12.15, right? So the first thing I need to figure out is at what degree that's going to be, okay? Now, if you're thinking of a clock, it's kind of obvious, but let's say you, I don't know, forget what a clock looks like, um, and, you know, you, you need to figure this out. From 12 to 12.15, well, that's 15 minutes, right? And I guess I should say that my step one will be find M, because that's really what I'm looking for right now, and it's what's going to happen, okay? So from 12 to 12.15, that's 15 minutes. Now, to find what I'm looking for, I need to do 15 minutes right over the whole clock which a clock is an hour is 60 minutes right 
when I do that math, it'll actually simplify to one fourth, meaning that 15 goes into 64 times, 15 into itself one time, and that gives me one fourth. Okay? Now, if I'm thinking of a clock, I can say, well, if it's one fourth of the clock, right, there's my clock there, one fourth would be something around here, right? Which I know you guys like to assume would be a 90 degree angle, but again, just for a more solid answer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply a hundred, uh, one fourth by 360 degrees. Remember that it's 360 degrees is the face of the clock. It's a round clock, okay? So if I'm looking for one fourth of it, I have to multiply by the entire thing. So what is one fourth of 360? Well, that actually gives me that 90 degrees, okay? So again, if you look at a clock, you can see that it would make a 90 degree angle, but for the actual math on how to figure it out, this is what you do. You figure out the, the amount of time that passed, put that amount over the 60 minutes, and then multiply that fraction by 360, and you'll get that answer. Um, it's important to know that because the clock, the, the questions may not be, um, as I like to say, as nice as this one, right? It could give you, um, I don't know, after 20 minutes. 20 minutes, you can't look at it and guess. I think it's going to be about, you know, 100 degrees. All right, so you need to know how to do this part to figure it out. But now I figured out my M, which is 90 degrees. So my step two is to replace values. A lot of these circles and arcs and everything, it's going to be finding the missing pieces and plugging it back in, okay? So it's very, funny enough, it's actually very algebra heavy, um, arc length and using doing the circumference in the area, right? Because it's more um, doing the actual math, less of proofs and angle measurements and drawing the shapes and constructions, okay? It's more of finding out values, all right? So actually what I should have also, what I should have made step two isn't replace the values because I still don't have my radius. So I need to find my R. Okay, so remember that the radius is from the center to the end. As you can see, I'm trying to highlight in my circle that's already drawn there. So the minute hand on a clock goes from the middle to the edge of the clock. Okay, so the hour one is the one that is short. So if the minute hand, right, my question says the minute hand of a clock is 10 inches long, then I know that my radius is 10 inches. Okay. Now, step three is to replace the values. So again, my formula is S equals m over 360 times 2 pi r. Okay, now it didn't exactly tell me to use 3.14, but I'm going to give you two different answers at the end of this, okay? So now that I've replaced the, variable, replaced the variables with values, step four is just to solve it, right? Oh, I didn't even replace it. I wrote it out and I didn't even replace it. So the length is equal to 90 divided by 360 times 2 pi times 10. Okay, now I'm going to solve it. So I'm going to kind of do this 90 divided by 360. Um, I want to get rid of that fraction so it's out of the way. So 90 divided by 360 is going to give me 1 fourth which we kind of already knew, right? If I looked back at, at this example over here, 90 is 1 fourth of 360, okay? And then I'm gonna multiply it. Two times 10 is just gonna be 20, and I'm gonna leave pi there at the end. Now, when I do this, 
I get 20 over 4 times pi, right? So 20 divided by 4, we should know is 5. So it's going to give me 5 pi. So answers can e either be 5 pi. This is an acceptable answer, even though I let leave it, you know, it kind of looks unfinished, but it's not. It, it is an actual possible answer. Or if I use the 3.114, I get 15.7, okay? And that's it. That's how you find the, the length, the arc length. All you do is figure out the information, plug it in, and solve it. Okay, so it's not too complicated. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is arc lengths for concentric circles. Okay, so if you don't know what a concentric circle is, it's basically a circle inside of a circle, in, or inside of a circle, you know, you can have as many circles inside of each other. The point is that um, it looks something like the diagram here in the, in the last column. Um, again, at least one circle inside of another circle. Kind of, uh, the best way to think of it is like a bullseye. Okay, so a bullseye is the perfect example for a concentric circle. All right, so we're going to figure this out, and we're going to kind of make a chart. Okay, let me see if I can fit the whole chart over here. And the first topic is going to be the radius. I'm just going to call it R to save myself some room. And then I'm going to write it S pi. So what you're going to kind of see what it looks like. Um, that's when I leave it as pi instead of multiplying by 3.14. And then I'll call the last column just S, which is when I multiply by that 3.14. 3 okay, so those are going to be my, my three columns. Okay, and then I'm going to have a radius of, well, my diagram here has up to three. So we'll do up to three. So we have one, one, two, three. Okay, I had enough space. I can actually make these columns a little bit bigger now. So S, we'll call it S with pi, S without pi. So, so one is going to include the pi symbol and one is not. Okay, that's all that means. And then I'm going to go ahead and just draw in these so that we're done with our chart. Okay. So my step one. Again, all I'm really going to do, right, I, I have here in my diagram, you can see it was already given to me, the example would give you the, the degree. Um, my degree here is a 90 degrees. So the only thing I'm really doing is replacing the radius in every single one. I'm going to have three separate equations. Remember that it is s, and I'll actually write it up here, s equals m over 360 times 2 pi r, okay? So since they're all 90 degrees, the first one is going to be s is equal to 90 over 360 times 2 times 1 times pi, which we already know that 90 over 360 is 1 fourth. We know that 2 times 1 is just 2, and then I have my pi there. This is going to equal, oh, actually, I should have done this in a different color. Step 2 will be to solve. Okay, so then I'd get 2 over 4 pi, which is just equal to 1 half pi. So in my, my s with pi, it's going to be 1 half pi. And then if I multiply 1 half, or 0.5 if you want to do it that way, by 3.14, I end up with 1.57, okay? And now I'm going to do the next one. 
So the next one is going to be, again, 90 over 360 times 2 times 2 pi. Again, that's going to be 1 fourth times, now in this case, 2 times 2 is 4 pi. So when I do 4 over 4, it's going to give me 1. So 1 pi, or just pi, right? I can just write, that's a horrible pi. I can just write it as pi, right? 1 times pi is going to be pi itself, okay? Or 3.14, okay? And the third one, I'm going to have to use this area over here. So it's going to be 90 over 360 times 2 times 3 pi. Again, that's going to equal 1 fourth times, and this is actually going to be 6 pi, which gives me 6 over 4 pi. So if I simplify, both of these can be divided by 2. That gives me 3 halves pi. So 3 halves I keep forgetting to change the colors. This should be in red. 3 halves pi, right? And then when I actually solve that, that's, I'm going to go ahead and put it in my calculator. 3 halves times 3.14. And I'm going to get 4.71. And that's it. That's all you have to do, okay? You just keep using the same information and you keep changing the radius depending on which one they're asking for. Okay, and you know, you can keep going with this chart. If I wanted to, I could keep doing four, five, six, so on and so forth. It's just the same steps. I'm just replacing the radius, but everything else is going to stay the same because the radius is the same. I mean, the yeah, the radius is the same, and the degree is also the same in this case, right? If it's a, if it's a concentric circle, it doesn't matter how many sub circles you have that angle is going to be the same angle throughout all of them. Even though in this first circle, right, you can see the circle is really small, so it takes up a big chunk of the circle versus the larger circle, okay? But it's still the same thing. It's still 90 degrees, okay? So that's all you have to do for that. Now the last thing to talk about is radians. So radians is just another way to talk about angle measures, right? You have the two main ones. You have the degree and you have the radian. Um, so if you remember when we started doing um, angle measures in our calculators, um, some of you guys had the, it said the word uh, rad, right? That means it was calculating using radians instead of degrees. They're both the correct answer, it's just a little bit different on how you have to solve for them, okay? Um, 90 degrees is not the same as the radians, okay? It's not going to be 90. And actually, there's a special formula, which is right here, that you use to convert degrees to radians, and even from radians to degrees, okay? So my first step, let's say I'm going to convert um, 60 degrees. Okay, so my first step is to replace the value. Right? And you can actually see that this, this um, formula for changing it is actually very similar to the arc length formula, except it doesn't have the radius at the end. So this is going to be 60 over 360 times 2 pi. Okay, so again, all I'm going to do is now solve. So what I do is I do 60 divided by 360 which I can get rid of my zeros here. 60 goes in, 6 goes into 36 six times. So it's actually 1 6 times 2 pi, right? And then it's going to be 2 6 pi, which I simplify to 1 third pi. And that's it. This is 60 degrees but in radians, okay? So the difference is that radians always has the pi, okay? It is always there, always, all right? 
if you are calculating this and you don't end up with a pi at the end, something went wrong. Okay, I want to do another example because it's pretty quick. We're going to do 180 degrees. Okay, so again, I'm going to replace m with 180. I'm going to divide it by 360 and I'm going to multiply it by 2 pi. Okay, so when I do 180 divided by 360, right? So again, I'm going to eliminate the zeros there, meaning I have 18 and 36. So if I calculate this and I simplify it, eventually I'll get to 1 half. So 18 times 2 is actually 36, but I could have done by 9. I could have done, um, if I did it by 9, I would have ended up with 2 fourths, which is still 1 half, okay? Um, you don't have to know that 18 divided by 36 is 2, okay? Um, again, as long as you know up to your 12s times tables, you can figure this out. See, I did it using 9, okay? I'm then going to multiply it by 2 pi. So this is actually going to be 2 over 2 pi, which 2 over 2 is just going to simplify to 1. So 180 degrees in radians is just pi. Okay? Now, I'm sure some of you guys are thinking, does that mean 180 equals 3.14? I mean, technically, but it's not calculated that way. This is, this is the measurements. Okay, so it's not calculated in that same kind of way. I don't want you guys to think it that way. Um, but it is 180 is pi in degrees and in radians, okay? And that's it. So for your practice problems, there's actually three of them because we covered three different topics. So you have to do number seven, number nine, and number 14. Again, these are the textbook pages. It's 868 and 869. Um, so if you're watching these before spring break, you can let me know and I will help you out. Um, as for the online pages, I'm not 100% sure, but again, this is 16.2. So you find 16.2 and you look it up in your online book and it'll be at the end of the chapter. Okay.